Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of Dell World 2012. We're here down in Austin. We've been covering this event wall to wall. We had Michael Dell on yesterday, with a number of leading executives. And you know, when we come to events like this, you know, we talk about solutions, we talk about the hardware, we talk about the software, we talk about the products, but where the rubber meets the road in this industry and has for decades is the developer community. And we're here with Barton George and Dave Cote of Dell. We're going to talk about that, we're going to talk about those trends, we're going to talk about DevOps and all the action that's going on there. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very Thanks. much for having us. So you guys are very active uh, in the developer space. Uh, you've got, we're going to talk about Project Sputnik, yep. which is this new thing you guys have, have yep. going on. So, why don't you talk about your you know, general approach to developers and what's going on here at Dell World and then we'll get into it. Yeah, so the, so the way we got into this is that my day job is the, is the head of the, the web vertical. So basically we're, we're focusing on those people from the startups in the dorm room all the way up to the Googles and the Facebooks. And how do we better understand and serve them as customers? As we started digging in, and Kote helped out quite a bit with this, is we realized, of course, as you say, rubber meets the road, it's the developers specifically in this community, you, you can't go anywhere, can't do anything without the developer. So what we did was we started looking at solutions that we could, we could create that would target these developers uh, specifically. And what we came up with was Project Sputnik, which is this whole idea of taking an XPS 13 laptop, which is our thin Ultrabook, putting Ubuntu on it, the, the uh, OS of choice of most developers, uh, and then connecting it to the cloud. And so that was the that was the basic concept behind that. Okay, so um, so where where are you at with with Sputnik? Is it something that you just recently launched? Or yeah, it, it, so? it came out nine days ago, basically okay. uh, the 29th. Uh, and I think the thing that's really exciting about this is it started its life as a Skunk Works project within Dell. So one of the things that that we've been trying to do is Cote, along with a couple other folks within the company, has set up an internal innovation incubation program. So basically they're acting like a little angel fund within Dell, saying, hey guys, there's probably a lot of people within Dell who have ideas locked up in their heads that probably wouldn't make it through the normal processes. So if we get those people to come to us and pitch them, we'll pick the ideas that we think are the ones that are most likely to succeed and then back those. And so Sputnik, which is what I pitched, was the, was the first one. And so this was back on March 15th, it was basically Slideware, and we got the go-ahead. Uh, we announced the project as a project at the Ubuntu Developer Summit on the 7th of May. Um, we then announced two months later a beta program. We got 6,000 applications from people around the world who want to be part of this beta program, and that was what we, that really pushed us over the edge and said, you know what, this is this is realistic for a for a true product. And so we then set the wheels in motion, announced it at OSCON. Uh, and then pushed it from there, and then it finally came out as a real product here in the States uh, on the 29th. So Dave, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, DevOps. I mean, you've been blogging about this for years. I mean, if you go back to Agile and Scrum, and, and now we're seeing this DevOps movement take off. And, and um, I think you know, many, many more people are familiar with it now, but essentially, uh, you're, you're, you're seeing examples where DevOps is being implemented as having, you know, delivering massive improvements in developer productivity. So, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, explain the, the concept for those who might not be familiar with it, and then we can talk a little bit more about Dell's angle. Here. Sure, so, so like with all emerging like theories of software development, there's probably like you know five different definitions, but like I like to focus on the reasons why people do it, and essentially the idea is in starting in the consumer space and then more and more in the business enterprise space, like to be competitive, you want to get new features out and new software out as quickly as possible, right? Like, you know, like you open up some, some app on your phone and if it hasn't been updated in a while, you probably are bored with it, right? Like you want new features. And so a lot of where DevOps came from was this, this idea of how do we accelerate development so we can push more features out more frequently, like a couple times a week or maybe even more, instead of waiting six, 12, 18 months. And so also in, in, in a, uh, a cloud context, what becomes important is you have to worry a lot more about the infrastructure and the cloud platform you're deploying to, not just the software you're writing. So developers are forced to be a lot more system administrator minded. And so what DevOps is trying to do is fold together those two ideas so you can really accelerate the delivery of your software. And also, there's all sorts of phrases like, uh, I think software defined stuff is like the, the new way of putting it, but basically you look at your, your infrastructure as programmable, right? You look at your infrastructure as just an extension of your application. And developers are a lot more interested in knowing how they can program that to get their software out quickly. 
And there's a whole bunch of tools and other stuff wrapped around it, but that's the general idea of DevOps. Yeah, so what do you see as the, um, the, the, the skills around that? I mean, is it, is it, is it DevOps, or are you seeing uh, Ops Dev, and how are the successes occurring in the, in the marketplace? What do you see as working? I, I, think, I think the main thing, like with a lot of shifts in development, you need a developer who's uh, tolerant of being curious, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? So, you know, they've got to be willing to uh, get their hands dirty with system administrator stuff and, kind of, and understand what's going on below their runtime level, outside of their area of comfort. Now, thankfully, they don't have to like do that perfectly because there's a lot of tools like, one of the things we use in Sputnik is this open source tool, Chef, that seeks to automate a lot of things. And then there's Puppet and CF Engine and some other things. But what's, what's been interesting to occur is a lot of those tools, most of those were written by system administrators who became very good programmers. And so pro they, it appeals to programmers a lot. And it's a much more programmer friendly approach to doing system administration and doing sysadmin stuff. And so a developer just has to be willing to like, you know, use a man page every now and then, understand like what's happening at the lower operating system level and just sort of expand beyond the, the sort of sandbox comfort that we, like the, the .NET and Java era made us pretty comfortable with way back in the early 2000s. Yeah, so you guys are doing a lot in the OpenStack community. Everybody's now hopping on the bandwagon, right? Um, I mean, my sense is a lot of companies are joining OpenStack because they don't want to get left out of the open conversation. I mean, you guys were there in the early days. Um, right. What do you see is happening in OpenStack? Uh, Clearly a lot of developers are excited about it. You go to the OpenStack events and it's, you know, developers are saying, hey, this is the real deal, it's going to happen. Um, I, I've actually said to a lot of CIOs, it's not ready for prime time yet, but there's you know, a lot of big companies behind it. What's your take on, on OpenStack, and particularly in the context of the discussion we're having here today? Well, I think um, what we've done, it's not for the faint of heart quite yet, so <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're correct in, in that assessment. The labor that of love. <laughs> um, but what we've done on, uh, with, with Sputnik is we've taken it, as I said, as a, a client to cloud solution, the idea being that OpenStack is where you're going to be de uh, deploying it to. Now you can also do it to Amazon, you can also, we're trying to get it so that it also works um, uh, to our vCloud, but the primary target we're thinking of is, is OpenStack for it, uh, and we think there's going to be a community around that to, to develop it. Um, but I'll, I'll turn it over to Kote to talk a little bit more uh, broadly about this as in, in his day job as the, the head of strategy for our for our cloud efforts here, uh, he can he can give you his own own thoughts. Yeah, there. no, no. I, I we we actually have we have a, a group that's been bringing OpenStack to market for a while now, and the types of customers they have are, are what I would call sophisticated people. They're 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 users and customers who know what they want, and they're willing to put together the parts of OpenStack. But increasingly, we get a tremendous amount of interest on people coming to us and just saying they want to use OpenStack to run their, their private cloud, or they're interested in the compatibility that OpenStack would promise between a private cloud and an open cloud. And so, I, I think it is, it is, if you think back to the Linux days, right? Like it is, the state of OpenStack is like the early days of, of Linux. Kind of like, I don't know, let's say 99, 2001 or so, mm -hmm. right? And like, like today, or was it yesterday, but sometime at Dell World here, you know, we, we announced like a, a very strong commitment with to OpenStack. And, and I think increasingly as you see more big commitments like that from the players, again, to be analogous to the Linux world, like you probably remember back when IBM and Oracle were like, yep, Linux is a big deal. And then that, you know, helped accelerate OpenStack uh, work. And like you're saying, there's a tremendous amount of vendor interest and, and effort around OpenStack, but also a tremendous amount of people who really just want like an open platform with a rich, vibrant community around it. And that's the sense that people get is that of all the, the, the open cloud platforms you could choose, there's lots of stuff hanging around it. Yeah, well every decade or so we see this confluence of events. You mentioned IBM and Oracle. Yeah. Not really teaming up, but sort of going yeah. in the same direction. Exactly. You know, frankly, against Microsoft. I mean, I remember Steve Mills said, we're going to spend a billion dollars on open source. And, exactly. Uh, and it was a, a really effective way to compete. I mean, I, as in, a, in a way, I look at OpenStack and I see Amazon you know, charging into the enterprise and I see a lot of people saying, well, wait a minute. You know, there's maybe a better way that's more open and something that we can participate in. Is that, do you think that's a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I, I think that the, the way I think about it is, there, there's, you know, if, if, if we put out mainframes and, and AS400s and those, those older platforms, there's basically two giant platforms at the moment. There's Linux and Microsoft, right? And those are big platforms for just generic IT. And I think increasingly what you'll see, and, and then VMware is sort of substrated around that as another, I don't know if it's a full platform or a half, but you know, it's, it's a thing you run IT on, it's very important. And I think as you see OpenStack emerge, it'll be, 
whatever the count is, it'll be another platform over the next five or 10 years and things will just run on that platform. And that's, that's what's exciting for us at Dell and all the other people who are interested in the industry is like, there's a whole new platform. And so it's kind of like a nice green field that you can go out there and like bring your customers along with you and actually build that platform out to fit the needs that they have and, and also put a nice business around it. And so that, I think that's the opportunity we have with OpenStack. You mentioned VMware. What do you make of the recent moves to spin out Cloud Foundry and, and all, the, uh, all the cool Spring kids have, have set up yeah, their own shop right. now under Pivotal. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, Pivotal Labs. And yep. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like, like there, there's, there's a lot of fun assets they have in there. I, I was always a big fan of Spring Source. I was, I'm an old Java developer and like right. I really like the work that they did. And, yeah, they've got a good collection of stuff there for, for application developers. Well, so. I think there's, I, see, I have to say, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as nearly as close to this space as you guys are, but the developers I've talked to were, felt like they were sometimes getting mixed signals from, from VMware in terms of the commitment. So, you know, maybe this will solidify that. Yeah. Well, it was interesting, I think, just seeing Paul Moritz over the last couple of years and talking about VMware, how he went from focusing more on the traditional VMware to the last time I saw him speak, it was all about Spring Source, it was all about Cloud Foundry, it was all about this new stuff. And so I think he was laying that foundation, sort of dropping the hint, uh, and now it's, it's been set out. In fact, one of the things that we've got here showing um, here is called FastPass, which is a pass offering that we have that's built on top of Cloud Foundry. And I think one of the things that this shows is, is also illustrative of, is the fact that we at Dell are trying to do things a little bit more experimentally. In other words, not wait till they're completely baked to get out there. So a lot of these things like open source, like uh, this past solution, get it out there, get people to react to it uh, in much more of an agile kind of a DevOps way and then take it back, take that feedback and, and correct on it. In fact, that's the way we, we ran the entire uh, Project Sputnik was from the very beginning, getting people to, to blog on it, to talk about it in idea storm. What do you like? What do you don't like about it? and take that feedback to, to course correct along the way. And I think that that's something uh, you're going to see more of us doing in, uh, doing more of in the, in the future. So how about the Hadoop and the big data crowd? I mean, um, are they glomming onto this? I mean, you guys developing? Yeah, ab you know, absolutely. In fact, we, we have a lot of, uh, to, to throw HPC into the mix, but let's just say grids that do a lot of data crunching, yep. right? Like we like the um, the OpenStack business we have does a lot of interesting uh, work in, in in standing up Hadoop clusters and yeah I mean there's a tremendous amount of interest in and again starting with the generalized thing of HPC and maybe the way you solve it is with Hadoop or maybe there's all these ways but yeah there's a lot of interest in doing things with that and and I think that's one of the things that's attractive for Dell about cloud is because of the not only the economic shift of cloud making things more affordable but also because of the agility that it brings. I, in, in my opinion, it means that it makes enterprise class technologies applicable and easy to consume by the wider market, right? And that's where Dell like does really well, is like, you know, you don't have to be like a giant bank to have like a really good data crunching cluster, right? Like, it can be easy to stand up a Hadoop thing and affordable and then you can like rent a supercomputer for 10 minutes, Gives right? Gives the underdogs an advantage. Right, you know, right. That's, or the, or the levels the playing field, I guess. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's, it's always great when like a uh, previously esoteric, expensive, but interesting technology gets just like spread across the market to see what they do with it. I mean, there's kind of no predicting what happens. Like, you know, like uh, what's an example? Like Square is an interesting example, right? Where like you go to the food truck wagons around town and everyone's got a Square device yeah. and it's just like, what? Like, yeah. I mean, that's fascinating that that, that happens. Excellent. So, and I think we, and we do actually have an offering based on Cloudera's distribution of Hadoop, and that's who we've partnered with. So that's something we've been looking at. We've got partnerships also with Pentaho on top of that. And uh, who else have we partnered with, do you know? It's mostly uh, Cloudera and the Hadoop space. And, and CDH, you're packaging up solutions for yep. Hadoop, right? right? So you don't have to be, uh, you know, MapReduce genius to deploy. Exactly, uh, yeah. Great. Right. good. And, and actually, the second incubation project we have is this uh, project called Riptide. And it's not, it's not a Hadoop thing, but it's based around the idea of how do we easily package up business intelligence for people to, uh, to buy. And there's a little, uh, well, little compared to Dell. They're a big company. But there's, there's a small company down in San Antonio that does sports equipment. And they're using this Riptide product to just analyze their sales data and just find out how they can sell things better, find their top sales performers, like companies that buy all of their equipment, like all this, this raw data. And it's a good example of how you take what was previously a very expensive, hard to use technology and package it up and simplify it so that it's, it's just applicable to lower parts of the market, basically. So it's BI in a, in a, in a box? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like one, of the, one of the other guys, uh, this guy Namdi, who's my boss now, who also helps run the incubation fund, he, uh, I, think, I think 
when this project was pitched to him the previous week and he'd seen a Magic Jack commercial. And he was like, we gotta have Magic Jack <laughs> for BI. <laughs> just like, it's an easy thing to plug <laughs> in. And, and that's totally what the intention is. It's like, plug it in, hook it up to Salesforce, hook it up to your on-premise database or whatever, and it'll just kind of integrate things together with you. And we use Boomi for that, which is a data yep. integration asset that we have. And you know, we have hardware laying around every now and then we can do something with, and it's, it's nice. Well, and it could be a could-do play. You could connect exactly. it. You know, yep. you know, right. Exactly. Right. And, and you can imagine that you could uh, burst out to cloud to yeah. like do some you know, renting supercomputer stuff and things like that. And it, it'd be, it'd be Well, we've heard a lot this week. People walk, walk around the, sh the show and they see the solutions. They go, wow, I didn't know you did that. And that's, you know, you're hearing it again, folks. Yeah, it, it's pretty uh, impressive. It's pretty staggering just to look at all the yeah. things we've got here. I'm impressed. Yeah, and I work uh, here. It's a big <laughs> organization, no doubt. But, uh, but uh, you guys are, are really Focusing the messages, you know, in a, in a few key areas, and so we're always pleased. We love the developer angle, and uh, really appreciate you guys coming on, and, uh, and and thanks for sharing your insights. Thanks, thanks Dave. Appreciate it. All right, this is Silicon Angles the Cube. We're right back with our next guest. We have got a big lineup coming. My co-host John Furrier is coming back. We got Steve Felice coming on. We got uh, Karen Kintos, and uh, Pete Course might even show up today. So keep it right there. <laughs>